Back in the 1980s, video games were tough. There was no World Wide Web to look up how to beat games. If you were lucky, your favorite game magazine might talk about a game you're playing. And if you were really lucky, they would give out strategies or cheat codes to help you out. Developers intentionally made games very difficult because the games usually weren't very long due to memory constraints amongst other limitations. They would make them tough so it would take you multiple tries over days to get good enough to beat them. This style of game design was mostly a layover from arcade machines, where they would be purposefully difficult to get as many quarters from you as possible. A lot of the time, NES games were frustrating. But thankfully, there was a product that hit the market in 1990 that changed everything. This was the Game Genie, a device that was marketed as a game enhancer and promised to give you infinite lives, higher jumps, and harder punches on the most popular NES games. Game Genie was developed by a company called Codemasters, who was based out of England. And in order to bring their product to North America, Codemasters teamed up with a company called Comerica, a Canadian video game publisher who initially licensed the Game Genie for distribution in Canada. Codemasters also wanted Comerica to distribute the Game Genie in the United States, but Comerica wasn't set up for this and sold the idea to a US company called Galoob, a mammoth in the toy industry and at the time was one of the biggest toy companies in the world. Game Genie was a literal game changer. You would slide it onto your NES cartridge, then you'd pop this long boy into your Nintendo, taking great care so that it slides all the way back. Quite like an actual Genie, the Game Genie would handle up to three codes at once, essentially giving you three wishes. Game Genie would directly interface with the cartridge you hooked it up to. It would intercept read requests from the Nintendo and respond with its own replacement values. For example, when the Nintendo would load in a game's data, it would know where to find that data by accessing it in a specific memory location. Normally, it would find this in the ROM on the cartridge, but what's interesting about the game Genie was that it was able to trick the Nintendo. So when the Nintendo would access a value at a specific memory location on the cartridge, the game Genie would pretend to be the cartridge, giving the Nintendo the value you set when you punched in your code. Those seemingly random letters that you used on the Game Genie screen actually decipher into memory addresses and values which the CPU understands. Yo, video game dudes! Talk to me! Excellent! Galoob absolutely nailed the Game Genie advertising campaign, releasing television commercials and magazine ads, using exciting electric designs, and mimicking pop culture icons like Bill and Ted. The best part of the whole thing was that Galoob was 100% honest about this product. It did give you infinite lives, it did make you jump higher, and it did make you punch harder. It was exciting, and it did indeed level the playing field. For the first time ever, anyone at any skill level could use the Game Genie to play through NES games that were beyond their skill level, removing many of the frustrating barriers. With the fact that Game Genie allowed players to drastically alter games from how they were meant to be played, it was only a matter of time until this resulted in a lawsuit. A common misconception regarding the Nintendo vs. Galoob lawsuit was that Nintendo initiated litigation against Galoob. This is not true. It was Galoob which fired first, not Nintendo. On May 17, 1990, Galoob preemptively sought court judgment that Game Genie did not violate Nintendo's copyrights, while also seeking injunction that Nintendo be restricted from interfering with the sales of Game Genie, even asking the court to stop Nintendo from revising its hardware to make it incompatible with the Game Genie. Now, obviously, this didn't sit well with Nintendo, a giant corporation pushing around another giant corporation, and soon after, Nintendo fired back with their own lawsuits against Galoob. Less than two months later, the courts issued a preliminary injunction favoring Nintendo and ordering Galoob to stop sales of the Game Genie in the US while the court case played out. The whole case took place over the course of a year, with Nintendo claiming the Game Genie created derivative works of their software, even going as far as to bring Shigeru Miyamoto to the San Francisco courtroom. Ultimately, the case was not successful for Nintendo, and the court found that since the changes the Game Genie made were not permanent, it was, in fact, not creating derivative works. This was a very high-profile case for the time, which is still cited today. In the end, Galoob came out on top, costing Nintendo approximately $15 million. In their newfound victory, Codemasters and Galoob went on to create Game Genies for other popular consoles of the day. 
the Game Boy, the Super Nintendo, the Sega Game Gear, and the Sega Genesis. Another common misconception about Game Genie for Sega is that Sega welcomed the Game Genie with open arms, gladly stamping it with their seal of approval. Well, in all actuality, Codemasters had already developed the Game Genie for Genesis and Mega Drive, and Galoob approached Sega with the ultimatum, this is what we're doing, either you agree, or we'll see you in court. And with how badly they beat Nintendo, Sega didn't want a piece of that. Codemasters got as far as developing a Game Genie 2 for Super Nintendo, but unfortunately it was never released. It's said that the Game Genie 2 was completed and ready to be released, but due to market conditions, it never came out. On top of that, Codemasters publisher Galoob was purchased by Hasbro in 1998, which further complicated things. But that wasn't the end of cheat devices. In the years following, other brands released cheat devices for then-modern consoles. Action Replay, Game Shark, Code Breaker, all became familiar names to gamers over the years. With the introduction of online services, trophies, and achievements, cheat devices tapered off at the end of the sixth generation of consoles. A company called Hyperkin attempted to reboot the Game Genie brand in the early 2010s, releasing devices for both Nintendo DS as well as a version for PlayStation 3. But these devices only supported a limited amount of games and worked offline only by editing your save files. These products were patched by Nintendo and Sony, and eventually Hyperkin halted support for the new Game Genie. The Game Genie was where it was at back in the old days. We'll probably never see something like this again, and that's fine with me. Ultimately, games are not designed in the same way they used to be. Gone are the days of crushing difficulty to hide the fact that the game's only 20 minutes long. Games have evolved to be more fair to the player, with the goal of keeping them playing for as long as possible. And with the move to online gaming, these days it's more important than ever to keep a level playing field. Online multiplayer is so much fun, and only scumbags cheat in online games. Don't be one of those guys. Something else that's interesting is that we've not only seen the dissolution of cheat devices, but also cheat codes as well. You used to be able to punch in a code on the controller to get things like infinite rockets, so you could mess around and explode everything. Yeah, you can still mod games on PC, but cheat codes used to be common on consoles, and you don't see it all that much these days, mostly because this would interfere with trophies and achievements. But that's okay. We'll always have the original Game Genie which was designed for a simpler time when it was necessary. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button to let me know. I'm trying to grow my little channel here, so if you liked what you saw, hit that subscribe button. I make all sorts of interesting videos here on my channel. If you enjoyed this one, I've got others that you'll probably enjoy too. Thanks so much for your time today, guys. Goodbye.